hi everyone and uh, let's see the second part of this so what we are going to do is we are going to see the ecosystem config and we are going to set up uh, the deployment for this so in the step one we have already seen how we are copying the files to the ec2 instance and how we are able to run the script onto the remote instance so first we do the copy of the files then we can also able to run the command on the remote instance so that command can be npm run deploy npm run migration npm run tear npm run build because that command will restart the application with the new code which we have just pushed so we already have these because if if you are using pm2 then it's easy to manage the instance and you can also reload the application using pm2 reload so <clears throat> There are many other uh, instances which we can use like PM2 reload, PM2 restart, PM2 list, PM2 delete instance and all. Now we are going to look into this uh, GitLab CI. Okay, so what we are doing is we are going to extend the GitLab CI because we need to improve it. Whatever we have written already the GitLab CI it doesn't, uh, is not mature enough. We need to add a caching, we need to store the artifacts, build artifacts, we need to have more stages, jobs created for the stages and and we need to write a clean CI YML file. So how we can do that? <clears throat> we will just take a look onto the GitLab CI and we are going to add a caching so that we don't need to install and we don't need to do npm install in each and every job. We can cache the npm CI artifacts like node modules, package lock and we can use those artifacts in each and every job like npm run test. There also you need node modules, npm run build, there you need a node modules. So we can have a setup task, npm run setup, a simply a setup as a job which does the npm install. Once the npm installation is done, what do you get is a node module, so you cache that artifacts and that same cache can be passed to all the other jobs. So first is we are using this docker container image v16.x, setup will do npm ci which is installing the node modules and creating node module folder for you and then cache that uh, node modules so that the build npm run build task or build job and test job can use it so we have all these different phases so the next phase will be build where we need a node modules similarly if there will be a test phase there will be we will need node modules so once you cache the node modules from the setup uh, job we can use that same node modules in all the other jobs similarly we will have a deploy in deploy also we will need node node modules and then also in the build when you do npm run build you need to store the artifacts also right because when you do build it's a typescript project so it will create a dist or build folder that you need to store in the build artifacts that can be used in deploy because in production applications, we deploy the node code which is inside dist folder, not like okay, we use a node mon or ts node to run the server. So here we have a deploy that would need uh, node modules, build artifacts, and in the deploy we will sync uh, the code to the EC2 instance, and this is how it will be linked. All the jobs uh, divided into different stages. Now next thing is uh, we will look into the GitLab CI and we will try to improve it. So default is node 16 image we are using. This is the different variables and this is the dependency cache. That is talking about okay what we are going to cache, what is the cache key and what is the policy and what is the path. So the first job we have is a setup. Setup is nothing but it's a common job which will run as a base because when if you do the build you need a setup job because setup is actually doing npm install and creating a dependency cache <clears throat> so it will create a default cache and it is going to cache the node modules similarly we have build so the build will uh, will also use this cache which has been created by setup and build needs setup task so line 65 in the build job is depends on the setup so when you when I mean you, you are not going to run the build independently we are going to run only deploy dev so deploy dev needs the build build needs setup and also the test and in the build we are also storing the artifacts 
and build need setup similarly the unit test i think would need a setup <coughs> and this is the cache it is using so here unit tests need setup and if when you do deploy dev the line 108 run the deploy dev when you are deploying pushing the code to the develop branch <coughs> So here, so here, if we look into this, what this is doing, it is getting the node modules from the cache. It's a staging deploy dev. It is getting the cache for node modules. And if you look into the line uh, 108, it is going to run only when you push something to the develop branch. And it needs build, build which needs setup task, setup job, and unit test. So both are dependent on setup. So setup will always run set up then build then test and then it is going to run deploy dev so this is a sequential execution and we already know 95 to 103 it is doing ssh using the private key which is already on the gitlab and then it is going to run pm to start or reload or pm to deploy the the typical challenge which i'm facing with this is this is a, a typescript project which is also using module aliasing so you cannot just do node index.js because if you are using module alias, you need to also pass that as an argument so that it can resolve those modules from the different folders. So it's a TypeScript and on top of that, we are using this module alias. So that's a little difficult. If we have chosen a simple project, that would be a bit easier to run and execute. So now we can just uh, commit this and we can just see the CI execution. And here I was just uh, playing with the CI changes, how all these are working. So this is a setup. So what setup is doing is it is going to use a node 16 image. And then there is a deploy task. Here in CI CD, we already have these variables created. You can also set up these variables, node, env, port, host, database variables, database URL and all. All these also you can configure inside a CI/CD variables because these are private and can be accessed whoever has access to the GitLab. Okay. So you can also put a node, env, host and port information in the process.env. So GitLab runner will be able to populate them inside a process.env. <coughs> and now once this is done we should be able to check the pipelines this is the deploy dev i'm just just checking if it is able to process it so what we are doing is scp that means we have copied the code so first scp command will copy the code and second will do ssh and run specific command by going into the folder so i'm just checking the pm to list and here it is doing a copying of all the files to the node api folder I saw a small issue that uh, while doing a CI, GitLab uh, is executing this command on the remote instance, but it was throwing an error that npm not found, node not found. Node we have installed through NVM. So I need to export this path explicitly to tell the, the remote while running that command that, okay, this is the place where uh, node is kept or npm is kept so that while running the npm or node command, it won't throw an error. That is a additional step which I need to do. This is depends on setup, how you are doing it. Maybe I will try to improve it and convert it into another script. So we don't need to expose a path here. So here you can see this is a setup job and then we have a deploy task. We'll wait for the deploy dev. And you can see deploy dev is successful, right? It is able to start the application on line four and this is how this end to end the whole process flow works we are able to ssh to the remote and then you are going to execute a command and that command depends on you what you are executing here what i'm doing is cd home node api exporting the path and then npm run deploy and deploy is nothing but a script written in the package.json which is going to use a ecosystem config file to start the pm2 instance that's it and this is how you should be able to get your application up and running. Now, next thing we have is, let's say we are running the application on particular port. 
how can we expose that port to the outside world because we have this aws ec2 instance which is a, a private server we can only ssh to that we can only access that so we need to add a rule so that on a particular port the outside world should also be able to communicate to our server okay this is a anybody from anywhere should be able to access 3000 port on this machine so i think i have modified the existing ssh rule okay i will get this back later so this is the inbound rule i can communicate to this server on 3000 port and what we need to do is we need to make sure that on 3000 port something is running so that if i try to use the host call on 3000 port i should be able to get the instance up and running this is security group security group there we have an inbound outbound rule to decide who can what can come in and what can go out from this instance because this instance is inside a public subnet of a vpc and here you will get a dns or public ip whatever you can choose and here colon 3000 and i'm able to access the application because if the application is running i should be able to see this this is a node app is rendering some template and i should be able to play with this example this is how you can expose your api to the outside world this is how you let's say i build an api and i wanted to consume it somebody wants to consume it so first you need to host that api somewhere and i'm, I'm hosting that on ec2 instance which i have on aws obviously aws will be charging me for that if you are not using three tier <coughs> and this is how we are setting up the gitlab ci and we can do ssh i think uh, we you also need to add that uh, ssh port if you have deleted it earlier i have override the ssh to uh, 22 so you need to add that in the security group i think you, i can show you that here because this you need to add as an inbound rule ssh to the 22 that will always be there because you want to ssh through the ci and then 3000 port custom tcp port so anybody can communicate okay now next thing is our simple setup because this is a typescript and uh, lot, lots of things are there you can create a local deploy script also that you can run let's say i have a lots of instructions to execute so what i can do is ssh to that uh, server and execute this bash script which contains npm install npm run uh, migration npm run dev and it will start the application there so inside this <clears throat> what are the key takeaways like uh, we have covered this in the last video also in this video we try to improve the overall process we understood how we can deploy the api to the ec2 instance or any remote cloud instance we understood how to write a gitlab ci and how to write a different jobs and the stages how all the jobs and stages works together uh, when we do push to a particular branch how we can deploy to the targeted environment running step by step process to the deploy application like scp command to the copy the files and then ssh to run the trigger the script using pm2 to ho hot reload without stopping the process and running script and all these steps we have uh, understood by the end-to-end -end process so that's it for this particular video this is the part two now in part three we are going into again back to our old code which is pn uh, pnpm workspace and there we will try to understand the same uh, setup how you can deploy to the ec2 instance and then how to deploy to the lambda okay so stay tuned i will be posting more on that